Tra la la! Chapter 1 George and Harold. Meet George Beard and Harold Hutchins. George is the kid on the left with the tie and the flat top. Harold is the one on the right with the t shirt and the bad haircut. Remember that now. George and Harold were best friends. They had a lot in common. They lived right next door to each other, and they were both in the same fourth grade class at Jerome Horwitz Elementary School. George and Harold were usually responsible kids. Whenever anything bad happened, George and Harold were usually responsible. But don't get the wrong idea about these two. George and Harold were actually very nice boys. No matter what everybody else thought, they were good, sweet, and lovable. Well, okay, maybe they weren't so sweet and lovable, but they were good nonetheless. It's just that George and Harold each had a silly streak a mile long. Usually that silly streak was hard to control. Sometimes it got them into trouble. And once it got them into big, big trouble. But before I can tell you that story, I have to tell you this story. Chapter 2 Treehouse Comics, Inc. After a hard day of cracking jokes, pulling pranks, and causing mayhem at school, George and Harold liked to rush to the old treehouse in George's backyard. Inside the treehouse were two big old fluffy chairs, a table, a cupboard crammed with junk food, and a padlock crate filled with pencils, pens, and stacks and stacks of paper. Now, Harold loved to draw, and George loved to make up stories. And together, the two boys spent hours and hours writing and drawing their very own comic books. Over the years, they had created hundreds of their own comics, starring dozens of their own superheroes. First, there was Dogman. Then came Timmy the Talking Toilet. And who could forget the Amazing Cow Lady? But the all-time greatest superhero they ever made up had to be the amazing Captain Underpants. George came up with the idea. Most superheroes look like they're flying around in their underwear, he said. Well, this guy actually is flying around in his underwear. The two boys laughed and laughed. Yeah, said Harold. He could fight with wedgie power. George and Harold spent entire afternoons writing and drawing the comic adventures of Captain Underpants. He was their coolest superhero ever. Luckily for the boys, the secretary at Jerome Horwitz Elementary School was much too busy to keep an eye on the copy machine. So whenever they got a chance, Harold and George would sneak into the office and run off several hundred copies of their latest Captain Underpants adventure. After school, they sold their homemade comics on the playground for 50 cents each. Don't miss our next exciting adventure, Captain Underpants and the Attack of the Talking Toilets. Coming soon to a playground near you. Chapter 4. Mean Old Mr. Krupp Do you see that old guy looking out the window up there? That's Mr. Krupp, the principal. Oh, no! no! Now, Mr. Krupp was the meanest, sourest old principal in the whole history of Jerome Horwitz Elementary School. He hated laughter and singing. He hated the sounds of children playing at recess. In fact, he hated children altogether. And guess which two children Mr. Krupp hated most of all? If you guess George and Harold, you're right. Mr. Krupp hated George and Harold. He hated their pranks and their wisecracks. 
He hated their silly attitudes and their constant giggling. And he especially hated those awful Captain Underpants comic books. I'm going to get those boys one day, Mr. Krupp vowed. One day, very, very soon. Chapter 5 One Day, Very, Very Soon Remember when I said that George and Harold's silly streak got them into big, big trouble once? Well, this is the story of how that happened, and how some huge pranks and a little blackmail turned their principal into the coolest superhero of all time. It was the day of the big football game between the Horwitz Knuckleheads and the Steubenville Stinkbugs. The bleachers were filled with fans. Yeah! The cheerleaders ran onto the field and shook their pom-poms over their heads. A fine black dust drifted out of their pom-poms and settled all around them. Give me a K, shouted the cheerleaders. K, repeated the fans. Give me an N, shouted the cheerleaders. N, repeated the fans. Give me an Ah, uh, ah, uh, achoo, sneezed the cheerleaders. Ah, uh, ah, uh, achoo, uh, repeated the fans. The cheerleaders sneezed and sneezed and sneezed some more. They couldn't stop sneezing. Hey, shouted a fan in the bleachers. Somebody sprinkled black pepper into the cheerleaders' pom-poms. I wonder who did that, asked another fan. The cheerleaders stumbled off the field, sneezing and dripping with mucus as the marching band members took their places. But when the band began to play, steady streams of bubbles began blowing out of their instruments. Bubbles were everywhere. Up and down the field, the marching band slipped and slid, leaving behind a thick trail of wet, bubbly foam. Hey! shouted a fan from the bleachers. Somebody poured bubble bath into the marching band's instruments. I wonder who did that? asked another fan. Soon, the football teams took the field. The knuckleheads kicked the ball. Up, up, up went the ball. Higher and higher it went. The ball sailed into the clouds and kept right on going until nobody could see it anymore. Hey, shouted a fan in the bleachers. Somebody filled the game ball with helium. I wonder who did that, asked another fan. But the missing ball didn't make any difference, because at that moment, the knuckleheads were rolling around the field, scratching and itching like crazy. Hey! shouted the coach. Somebody replaced our deep heating muscle rub lotion with Mr. Prankster's extra scratchy itching cream. We, we wonder, wonder who, who did, did that, shouted the fans in the bleachers. The whole afternoon went on much the same way with people shouting everything from, Hey, somebody put sea monkeys in the lemonade, to, Hey, somebody glued all the bathroom doors shut. Before long, most of the fans in the bleachers had gotten up and left. The big game had been forfeited, and everyone on the entire school was miserable. Everyone, that is, except for two giggling boys crouching in the shadows beneath the bleachers. Those were our best pranks yet, laughed Harold. Yep, <laughs> chuckled George. They'll be hard to top, that's for sure. I just hope we don't get busted for this, said Harold. Don't worry, said George. We covered our tracks really well. There's no way we'll get busted. Tra-la-la! Now don't go without clicking on our Smart Apps for Kids links for great reviews, free apps every single day and the best giveaways.